Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrea Borghi. I work for uh, Camp to Camp in the Geospatial Division as a DevOps engineer. So this means that my daily job is to take uh, open source software and to glue it together to make it run in production. So today I will uh, tell you about uh, the journey uh, that it was this last year to develop from one side, so my colleague Gabriel Roldan, who could not travel from Argentina to be here with me today. So I will give his part of the presentation about the code, just the cloud itself, and uh, my part about uh, how to, uh, how we, we did now to make it installable and easy to install in a Kubernetes environment. So, um, so first of all, what is, in, in two words, so the, 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 I would say the takeaway I would like you to have at the end of this presentation is basically this slide, is what is GeoServer Cloud? GeoServer Cloud is, uh, is the code of GeoServer that we have split uh, in, a Spring, in a Spring Cloud framework so that we can benefit of the Spring Cloud framework in a true cloud native application. And uh, it, this really is important because it allows uh, to, to solve one of the major stress that we usually have with GeoServer when you want to operate it at scale, is that you want to synchronize in an efficient way uh, all the configuration changes. So you push a, a configuration change via the, the RESTful API or via the web UI, and you would like uh, all your 60 worker nodes to be uh, synchronized at the same time. And we benefit from the Spring Cloud uh, framework to do that, basing ourselves on a very stable piece of technology, actually. Uh, so as I said, it's still GeoServer. We do not develop new feature. We, we take the code of GeoServer as a library, and we wrap it with uh, Spring Boot. Uh, this means that in this way, it is a true distributed system. So it's a distributed application. Every uh, worker node actually uh, communicate with each other. In, 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 from the outside, you have one application. In the background, you have maybe 60 worker nodes running at the same time. It's, we call it opinionated because it was a, a strong choice to use Spring Boot, uh, quite uh, yeah, very opinionated. And also on the extension that we have chosen to support for the moment and to build in our Docker images, uh, so it comes really with a selection, which I, I will talk about later. Uh, it is meant to be containerized, so all the containers are already available for that. It is scalable, and it's really born for the cloud, so it's ready already for the cloud. Who is using it uh, for the moment? So these are the major projects which uh, are using and actually contributing a lot to the development of, uh, of uh, the server cloud right now. We have the French alerting central, the new, uh, the, the new central with, which will respond when you call the 112 in France uh, for the geographical part where they are the initiator of the uh, contributor of, the, of the, so this Nexus project for the, the server cloud uh, embryo, I would say. We have worked a lot with uh, one large Swiss uh, reinsurance company, which I may not uh, mention. <laughs> uh, which funded a, a big part also of the development at the current status, and we are starting working also with Deutsche Telekom, Canton Argao, and uh, the Ministère de la Transition Écologique in France for the next uh, development. So it's a, it's a project that is driven by needs uh, of our client. And uh, so really, it's still just server. Uh, you can find it uh, on, uh, on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, and the GitHub organization from GeoServer is GeoServer, and uh, right around it you can find the code from GeoServer Cloud. So it's donated to uh, the OSGeo. Um, it, and this is the most important architecture, uh, maybe how does it work? Uh, so I will spend a little time, uh, especially on this slide, to explain because you have, uh, using the Spring Cloud, uh, uh, the Spring Cloud, um, uh, way of doing, I would say, you usually 
have an ecosystem of microservices uh, that are, so for example, in this case, you have the GeoServer, I would say the, the, what correspond the most to what GeoServer is in general. So if you take the, the Azure Server server, and this is what you get here with all these separated uh, microservices. And what we have done is that for every uh, AWS service, we, are, or, uh, we, we have, or the REST API, the Web UI, the Web Cache, we have one dedicated uh, application. So it's, it's not it, where, you, where you really have a micro application that uh, just serves only that uh, feature. For example, we have a Geo Web Cache uh, pod, it will serve only the Geo Web Cache routes that are needed. You have a WMS, it will serve all the WMS requests. Uh, the, the Web UI is one dedicated pod, it will serve the Web UI. And what it does is that you have a gateway. Uh, that utilizes different, you, you can configure it to use several uh, discovery services uh, to know which backend actually is, uh, it should send it, its uh, request. And, uh, and this, this whole ecosystem here comes directly, uh, almost natively with uh, Spring Cloud. Uh, then you have monitoring uh, separated system, and then you have the, the configuration and discovery service that you can use the, the native Kubernetes discovery service, or if you run at of Kubernetes or you just choose to do it, you can use, for example, Eureka or another discovery service that is also uh, natively available in, uh, in Spring Cloud. And uh, this is the biggest part. So basically it's really, we, are, we don't have one Docker image. We have, I think, 11 or something like that because for every, for every, uh, for every uh, service we have a dedicated application. And so you, you might wonder, uh, ah, a, a very important, sorry, a very important uh, part is this event bus that we are using uh, as, is, so it's a reactive application and instead of using uh, simply a, an internal communication, an uh, event communication bus internally to the application, we expose it via a messaging uh, uh, system like RabbitMQ or Kafka. This is, this is all done by the, the framework, basically. You are very low, uh, low effort as a developer to implement that. And basically, you, you export all your uh, asynchronous process in, in your application to this external messaging queue and all the listener, in this case, you will have, for example, the RESTful API, uh, which receives uh, a put uh, update, for example, and it will write this update to the disk or to the NFS server or to the JDBC uh, uh, config uh, database if you use uh, JDBC config. And it will, via this event bus, it will notify all the subscribers so everybody then is aware of this change and will implement the change on its own. So it's, in, it's, it's, uh, it's as an asynchronous processing, but it's, it's really fast. It takes uh, milliseconds to sometimes seconds if there is a lot of uh, load on the, on the system, but it's really, really fast. So you don't need uh, a reload, a complex reload mechanism where you have, for example, one just server node working as a back office where you, you update the configuration and you reload all your services. This is a usual way of doing with, uh, well, when you want to scale out your servers, you have some masters and some replica and the replica then get uh, restarted. You can do JSMX uh, plugin, there are other ways. We found this way here really, uh, amazingly efficient. So this is most, probably the most important slide about the architecture. Uh, I encourage you to ask questions in the end if you have still a uh, question about this. Um, and now I will go a little bit more to what interests me, uh, because okay, it's good, but I have to install it on Kubernetes and make it run for my clients, so what do I do in this case? So we have a lot of uh, GeoServer cloud uh, ready for use, uh, uh, Docker images that you can find on Docker Hub. Uh, we have lost, we have automatic, automatic, uh, automatic security scan every time we build the images. They are regularly scanned, so uh, we, this is in the process in the pipeline of our uh, CI. Uh, it's scalable because yeah, basically in Kubernetes you just can set any pods that you want and, and you have it. This is really easy to do. It comes natively with Helm charts. Uh, Opinionated, I will just speak a, a moment about that because 
what this means is that you can, you can, if you don't want all your services, say you're using only WFS, you, you can just deploy WFS service and it, it will cost you less. You don't need to have everything running. You can really just select what you want. And uh, we have a select, so this is maybe not an ex exhaustive, but it's, a, uh, I would say it's, uh, I think it's uh, all the extension that came in, uh, in our mind when we just prepared the slide. So this is what is uh, currently available uh, as extension in the server cloud, built in. So you don't need to try to add something. This is built in. Uh, most, in most notably, we added also Joe Web Cache uh, this year. Uh, but otherwise, you have all, uh, most uh, Mapbox style WMC. We have also the, the WMS KML reflector. I have a slide at the end uh, that with the list of the, the new thing. But yeah, you can read it. Uh, uh, there is this is uh, I would say the current available extension. You can enable them or not uh, simply via uh, configuration files. Uh, these are the Spring uh, Spring Boot application YAML. It's it's really an easy way of. Uh, just changing that via uh, environment variable. So it's really flexible, the configuration. If you can leave it open, uh, but if you want really to, to, to be exactly picky about what you want to, to include, you can just choose that. And it's really ready for the clouds. And I always pick most, uh, so you can use it, uh, where there is a Docker Compose file that you can, they can test on the, that you can test on the, directly in your server cloud repository. There, there is a, in the GeoServer Cloud source code repository is a Docker Compose file if you want to test it on your local machine, but it's really meant to be uh, to be installed in a Kubernetes cluster with the, the mchart that we we, uh, we propose, and um, and now I will speak uh, mostly about that. So how do you uh, what how uh, so the work that we did actually to make it easy to install and. Um, so this, there is an Helm chart. Uh, if you don't know Helm, Helm is it's the, a standard way of uh, packaging application for Kubernetes. So in two words, it's, you, you have all these configuration files for Kubernetes, hundreds and hundreds of uh, YAML files, and you want to change value based on your, uh, on your uh, needs, on your environment, the, 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 I don't know, the, the name of the database, of uh, the, the host name, something. And these are templates, basically. An M chart is a template for Kubernetes configuration. And uh, this is what we do here. So we have this, this uh, Helm chart that is uh, really designed to be included in any of your applications that you might already have uh, in the cloud running with an Helm chart. And uh, the concept that you have developed with uh, the, my other colleague, the, the DevOps at camp to camp is that uh, we had a lot of struggle uh, because every time we wanted to migrate, maybe even small uh, cartographic application, we had this problem of, okay, I have to write Elm, uh, Elm, Elm files for that, and it's, it's, it's a huge effort. And so now we have uh, taken the time to uh, almost write all our chart, the current, that for all the basis construction blocks that we use, like map server, QG server, tile cloud chain, geo server cloud makes no exception. And so to be actually, uh, pre-packaged and you just add them as dependence. It's the same case of an import in a Python file or, or an include in, in C. So really, it's, it's, these, these are meant to be important. I will show now an example on how you do that. Uh, ah, yeah, what you can configure in, the, in, the, in this chart here. So all the usual, I would say, suspect that you want to uh, change in any deployment, so number of replicas of, your, of the different uh, deployment, any kind of environment variable that might change the behavior of, of your server. The, you can use the, the two common ways of using it for the moment is the, with the JDBC config. So we have the JDBC config plugin for the, the data here. And this, for example, is what we do in the Nexus project or on NFS, which is what we do on most of our other clients because it's actually very easy. If you have already a, a, a data deal for your server, you just put it on NFS, you mount it in your pods and it works. It's really plug and play. It's, uh, so, so this is a very, uh, if you don't have an extension that is not supported, so this is the disclaimer, it, it works in two hours. <laughs> but yeah. Provided that you, the, all the extensions are supported. And uh, yeah, you can add uh, basically anything. We, we have added a logic to add the um, injection of init container, for example, for monitoring. Uh, in this case, we, we did it for uh, application insight from uh, Azure. 
And, uh, and are, there is a, if you don't want to write those all those YAML files for the GeoServer cloud configuration, there is a, a repository that follows the same release candidate, so the, the same release cycle, you can just use that, and it's actually a part, by default, I, you get the default configuration, so there is little to no effort in this case. In your chart, it's come like this, so you, have, you define your, your chart, uh, Okay, so this is, if for those who, for, this is really for those who know what an M chart is, but it's really easy. You get actually to describe your chart, and then you can list dependencies. Uh, and in our case, you, then, so this is really how it is meant to be used. It's not meant to be forked and, and then updated. It's meant to be used like this, and if there are changes that should be done, it should be ideally contributed to the mainstream uh, chart with options to deactivate or activate. Them. So this is how we would like you, if you want to contribute, to pull request that. So mostly in the in the in the mainstream one, and without changing the default behavior. So if you want to add something, the option should be uh, should be uh, not included and activable via a value in the value file. Uh, Spring Boot. I was uh, so I am not a Java developer. But I was really amazed uh, by how Spring Boot and Kubernetes, so especially Spring Cloud, work together. They are really, uh, <laughs> you really have a good time actually once you accept some of the feature of Spring Cloud. Yeah, you have to accept that. And once you have accepted that, then, then, then it, it starts to be actually very good because you can have, a, a, I would say, a cloud-aware application because it can use the, the Kubernetes service discovery. So, for example, for the gateway, you can use the Kubernetes service discovery. So, without the need to deploy Eureka and all those services, which you should also maintain, you have a service discovery with Kubernetes, you can use it with, uh, with Spring Cloud. Uh, it, with no cost, it, it's already there. Uh, Kubernetes rely on that. It's extremely easy to configure the application because you can use the normal, uh, the normal way of working with Kubernetes object, which is via config map, secrets, environment variable, and uh, Spring Cloud, you have extremely, you have, uh, maybe too many options as you, you can do to inject those dependencies in, uh, in, in your configuration, but it works. And you have, most importantly, the concept of profiles, where you can already pre-package selected ways of deploying it. For example, we have several profiles that already exist. If you are on a Kubernetes cluster, if you are on Docker or Compose, if you want to use the GDBC, if you want to use an NFS server for, for that. So this, this, all these features actually make it uh, really great for that. If you want to run in production, there are a couple of things that, uh, so this is just, okay, I install it, it runs, great. Uh, you want to monitor it. You, you want to monitor it, you want to see how it performs, you want to be sure that it's running. So uh, we have used, and there are two things for that. One thing very important is the health checks. Uh, in the current Geo server, you can use a selected uh, REST endpoint to see, okay, is my server working, but there are not dedicated health check. With Spring Boot, you get the actuator. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a feature in Spring Boot where you can actually build the, the core uh, of your application, say, okay, the status of this, uh, of this code should be, this should be activated, this should be initialized, this should be uh, working, and so, and you can put all that logic in your readiness probe, liveliness probe, and health, and in general, other health check that you want to be using, and Kubernetes actually can use this directly to know this pod is safe, this pod is not safe, okay, I, 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 should, I should remove this one and schedule a new one or it's coming up, but it's not ready to accept traffic, so it won't register it to the, the service discovery. And, and this is natively working, so it's really uh, no effort. Uh, we have also used the application metrics, so the MicroMeta library is now part of, since Spring Boot 2, it's actually included in Spring Boot, and it's a very interesting library to add uh, to your application any kind of custom metrics. For example, here, uh, uh, I show here an example uh, of how we could use, for example, this is the, the update sequence, and I'm still one minute less, so I will, I will, uh, I will stress a little bit. Uh, so this is an example of one custom metric that is exported, and I just wanted to speak about uh, the, the development this year, so we have migrated to Java uh, 17. There is a GeoWeb cache integration. 
We have this extension that, uh, that came this, this year as well, so the geostyle vector task map box style and auth key authentication, and several uh, vulnerability checks. Uh, I will now do a little of just clicking. You can try to read uh, fast what we want to do. Most important one that really interests me is the GeoWeb Cache distributed tile seeding. I really would like to, to have GeoWeb Cache be able to work together as a system for the tiling process. Uh, Self-feeling uh, auto, yeah, this is, um, yeah, I, I, I have to go uh, to the conclusion. So uh, we are ready for production. It is natively a scalable system because we just use Kubernetes and it scales as you want. Uh, you can configure almost in any way that you want, provided that you can write an environment variable. And uh, you can have a zero downtime and transparent migration from GeoServer, provided that all the, the, the extension already uh, available. And, um, and then our, next, uh, our first uh, client who is going in production with that should go in production hopefully next month. I was a, a little bit uh, optimistic in my abstract uh, when I wrote it a couple of months ago. <laughs> so thanks you for uh, your attention. Uh, please just I invite you to test it out, uh, report bugs, uh, contribute if possible. Um, but just, just opening issues and testing it, you, you, you would really help the, the project. Thanks a lot.